everybody, welcome to the homestead. So what we're going to do today is continue on in our series of our meat preservation. Uh, we are harvesting a number of deer so far this year and uh, doing good with that. And so we're trying to preserve the meat. And what I have here today in these containers is a couple of meat selections uh, that we're going to be preserving. And it's not, this is not going to be a real in-depth video. I'm just going to kind of tell you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. But um, there are lots of videos, lots of resources online where I have tried to glean as much information as possible in the ancient methods of curing and preserving meat uh, without refrigeration. And so, uh, you know, we don't have refrigeration here. We want to be able to save this meat so we can eat it throughout the year. Uh, people today, a lot of times, will can meat and, you know, with the pressure canning. And we have done that before and we are going to continue doing that. However, I'm trying to explore some other ways to provide us some opportunities to preserve meat uh, without canning. It's only recently in modern history that we've been able to pressure can our foods and preserve them that way. Um, but 200 years ago, they were still preserving meat the way we're, we're trying to do it here today. And that's with salt and with uh, natural nitrates. Uh, people have you know, asked a lot of questions about nitrates because there's so much information out there about how nitrates are bad, uh, sodium is bad, and I, I disagree with that. Uh, the FDA really promotes that F, you know, salt is bad, stay away from salt, it causes high blood pressure. What I truly believe, and you can find medical resources online, uh, Dr. Mercola is one of those places where you can find this information, where it's actually sugar that causes the majority of diseases and problems in, in American health today, especially in Western cultures. It's the sugar. And so what we try to do is go back and, and, and people before with how they preserved meat was with salt and just natural nitrates. A lot of the stuff you buy in the stores today has a lot of chemical preservatives. Let me give you an example of one. In Morton's uh, uh, curing salt, you can buy Morton curing salt on the market today. And that Morton curing salt will have propylene glycol in it along with other chemical nitrates that they've put in there and nitrites that they've put inside that curing salt. And propylene glycol is a derivative of gasoline production. So what they do is they make, uh, I think it's propylene oxide that comes from gasoline production and production of fossil fuels. And that propylene uh, oxide then turns into, they, they change it into propylene glycol. And they use it in a lot of food production and food, food, modern food preservation procedures. And I just don't see how ingesting something that's a byproduct of fossil fuels can be healthy for you. So uh, that's part of my reason in trying to preserve our own food in a natural way. I'm just using salt. I'm using natural nitrates that you find from plant materials like celery. Uh, arugula is another uh, prime example that you can use to preserve meat. And so that's what we're doing. I, we've harvested our own celery. We did a video before about harvesting our own celery just for the purpose of curing meat. And so what I have here today are a number of uh, meat selections. These are the sections between... Uh, the collarbone of a deer and uh, the, the loin. And it's called, in, in the Italians call it capicola. And it, capa meaning head and cola meaning collar. So it's, it's basically the neck meat and loin meat, uh, the beginning of the loin meat of a deer. And uh, how you preserve this is you coat it with salt and you coat it with, nat we're coating it with natural nitrates from celery. We ground up our celery into a powder and then well, I fir the first thing I did when I got this selection of meat was to coat the meat in celery powder. Just you know, lightly sprinkle it all over the place on the meat, and then I put salt on it, a large amount of salt, and rubbed it into the meat, and then uh, just let it sit. This is going to sit for, like this for 14 days. And every day, this sits on ice inside of a cooler. It's pretty cool outside, so our ice is lasting a long time. Uh, we have a cooler outside. It's down in the 30s and 20s uh, at night now, uh, for the most part. And basically, every day I go out, and I take this. It's a food-grade container. And I pull it out, and I drain the liquid that has come off of this meat. And it's been curing now for two straight days. And every day I take it out again and I just drain off the meat. And every day it's getting the, the liquid that, that accumulates inside of this container is becoming less and less because the meat is being drained of all of the moisture that is inside it. And so I just drain it drain, and then I put a new coating of salt, a, a, a small coating of salt all over the meat once again to make sure it's all over the place. And this is going to sit like this for two weeks, 14 days. And it's going to sit in that cooler on ice. Uh, if you have a refrigerator at home, you can use a fridge but it's gonna sit on ice uh, for 14 days. 
After 14 days, I'm going to rinse off this meat. It's already starting to stiffen up a little bit because of the moisture content being removed from the meat. And after 14 days, I'll rinse it off with water, get all the celery off, get all the salt off. Um, and then I will uh, take this and then I will rinse it in wine. And the, the wine provides a really good amount of acidity, also provides flavoring uh, to the meat and gives it a, just a good coating of wine. Put, put all that on there and then uh, let that dry off. And then I will let this hang. And this will hang for about six months in my pantry. At that point, it is completely cured. All it needs to do now is age. And uh, you can age it in a refrigerator. However, the people before our time would, during the winter time, they would begin the aging process when it's cold in a, in a cool, dark place. And our pantry fits that description. It's the place that gets the least amount of heat in our house. And it always stays a pretty good uh, temperature to do that with. And so we're just going to let that hang. And we're going to see if it works. This is our first time doing this. I, I'm making no promises. You probably saw our other video where we have all of our hard salami. It's now hanging inside of our, uh, inside of our pantry. And it was uh, cured uh, with salt. Again, also celery. And then it was smoked. We're not gonna, I'm probably not going to smoke this. I may or may not smoke one or two of them. I may get some more deer uh, cuts and, and then smoke those. But I think we're just going to let this hang inside of our pantry. We're going to encase it in a netting. Uh, one of them we're going to probably put inside of a beef bung. And that is the second stomach of a cow, and uh, let that cure that way as well. So there's lots of curing methods, and I really encourage you to go online, do as much research about this as possible, and then experiment and try it yourself. Um, I don't see if you if you as long as you keep the salt content heavy and you keep the nitri the nitrates in there, I don't see a, a, a large opportunity of you getting sick this way. This is how people used to do it, and see there are a lot of people who came before us who experimented with this and really got it down to a science. And there's a lot of companies out there today who are practicing these ancient curing methods and they're doing it with great success. And so I'm using those people as a model. I'm using our ancient ancestors as, as a model and the knowledge that they procured by doing this, doing these methods. And I'm just trying to copy it and try it for ourselves because I want to be able to find a way where I can preserve my meat with the least amount of energy possible not using pressure canning, not using any, any chemical preservatives, obviously, not using refrigeration. I want to be able to preserve our meat in a way that is natural, the way people used to do it, and just see what happens and try it. And, see, and, and you know, if, if I fail, I fail. I'll try again. But at least I'm going to try. And so that's what I would encourage you all to do, is to go out and try. Do the research. Go out there, find the videos. Just Google ancient cure, curing methods for meat. And, and we don't use pork here on the homestead. We use lamb, we use goat meat, we use cow, we, uh, beef, we use uh, a lot of venison. Um, anything you can do with pork, you can also do with any other meat. It's not a big deal. Just do the, follow the same recipes, just switch out the meat if you'd like for like venison or, or cow or beef or goat or lamb. And it should work okay. So this is what we got right now. This has been curing now for two days. Uh, um, uh, every day I go out, I rinse it off. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't rinse it off. I drain out the liquid and then I uh, apply a new coating of salt. Now the first day that I um, started curing this, I also added sugar, some powdered sugar on this, or you can use some granular sugar on this. You can just sprinkle the sugar. That also provides a good flavor for the meat. A very good flavor that helps intensifies the salt. I'm kind of people who know me know I don't like to add sugar to my savory things, but when it comes to curing meat, sugar goes a long way at providing a great flavor for a cured, salted, cured meat. So I also did that. It's up to you if you want to do that. Some people did it back in the day, some people didn't, but you, adding the sugar will also provide additional flavor. So that's really basically it. I just used pure salt, it's pure sodium chloride, no additives. No baking, uh, no, no anti-caking agents, um, uh, no iodine, nothing. It's just pure sodium chloride, pure salt. And there's a lot of places you can find this, and if you look for it, you can find it pretty cheap. We've sourced ours uh, pretty cheap for about, I don't know, $8 for a 40-pound bag. Um, you can find it as well if you just look around, uh, around your local uh, retail shops. So uh, we're just using pure salt, we're using celery for the nitrates, and the nitrates over time will convert into nitrites inside the meat and when that breaks down inside of the meat, it provides an amazing flavor uh, when it breaks down the protein molecules and converts into nitrites. And that really does go a long way at preventing things like botulism and other bacteria that the salt will, will not kill. Salt is only something that will kill about 90% of harmful bacteria. The rest um, is 
what the nitrates are for. And if you use natural nitrates, there's no harm, no foul. You're not going to die of cancer. Um, most of your plant, if you're a vegetarian out there, folks, most of your plants are very high in nitrates. And so there's a misconception out there that nitrates are bad, nitrites are bad. But if you're, if we, we love our veggies here, and most vegetables have very high concentrations of nitrates in them. People don't know that, but that's the truth. Google it and, and do your own research on that. So uh, that's how we're doing this. This is a capicola. These are deer loin, and uh, they're in the second day of curing. They're going to still remain curing for 14 days, and then we're going to go ahead and hang them. And we'll, we'll do a video after it's all said and done, after the 14 days when I hang it up, but also when it's time to eat this. When this is time to eat after about six months of being cured and hung, um, we're going to do a, a video on it and show you guys what the end result is. So I hope you, tu I hope you tune in. If you haven't uh, uh, subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share it with others on, on Facebook and places like Twitter. And give us a thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed all of the content that we're doing here and sharing with you, sharing with you all our audience. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll see you next time on American Homestead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really means a lot to us. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now you can support an American homestead by becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash an American homestead to see all the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel. You'll get access to private videos, pictures, and even live question and answer sessions that you can participate in. Some patrons will even receive free gifts throughout the year from the homestead. Visit patreon.com slash an American homestead to check it out and see the rewards of supporting our channel.